been in a kind of a weird RPG space on my Nintendo Switch recently because I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Shining Pearl and also Shin Megami Tensei 5 kind of bouncing back and forth at the same time. I'm going to talk about Pokemon Shining Pearl, but I can tell you one of them is very easy to play and very inviting and open and cutesy and the other one is punishing and twisted and weird and creepy and I'm kind of loving them both, but I'll talk about Shin Megami Tensei 5 later. Pokemon Shining Pearl, or Brilliant Diamond, depending on which way you go, is basically a recreation of a 2006 Nintendo DS game. Nintendo shot me out the review code, thank you very much. We have become increasingly big Pokemon fans in my household here, as my daughter has sort of experienced this universe. She loved Pokemon Let's Go, but she really loved Pokemon Shield. So she was looking forward to this one, but I have to say, this is a throwback. This isn't a game that sort of connects directly with what Pokemon Sword and Shield did, the sort of more 3D exploration, or what Pokemon Legends Arceus is about to do in the new year. This is definitely a nostalgic looking back through the rose-colored glasses of loving this franchise back in the day kind of experience. And there's nothing wrong with that. We saw something very similar with The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch, which didn't really stack up next to Breath of the Wild, but was valid and fun and super cool to dive into. And I think that there's a really interesting parallel with Shining Pearl and Link's Awakening, actually. They both have these big head, cutesy, chibi style, super deformed characters, which are adorable. Isometric viewpoint for the most part, although you can tilt the camera down a little bit. And they're really close in structure and in design. So if you know any of the old DS moves and choices and the right roster to collect, you're going to have all of those those experiences and that lesson and that learning for playing this one again. It's just that it's all been refashioned for a singular screen and it moves at a kind of a quicker clip and it's all been beautified and enhanced for this little portable. And I will say that that is also the way to really enjoy this game, especially if you played a lot of Pokemon Shield or you're sort of more into the evolution, no pun intended, of the Pokemon series than you are at looking back. But if you play this game in handheld mode, it's pretty sensational because there is that direct connection to playing these classic Pokemon games because it kind of evokes it and it looks like classic Pokemon games, but in our imagination, all of these little sprite animations and things that they were doing back in the day kind of looked like this the way that, you know, we would flesh them out in our minds. But now they actually jump off the screen. And I've been playing this on the OLED, the Switch OLED, and it's gorgeous. I think it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. I like the cutesiness. There's a warm glow about this. And it's been so relaxing and comforting to kind of sit back on the couch and just get lost in the, uh, in the region and to explore these little towns and go talk to these people that are all giving you advice and go digging underground into the grand underground and try to collect Pokemon in a bunch of different ways. There are a lot of random battles in this game as there was in all the Pokemon games pre this sort of new era of Pokemon where you can actually see all the Pokemon running around and you can walk up to them and get into battles and collect them that way. Now you're going to get in the tall grass or in specific areas within uh, different establishments or on the road, on, the, on your journey. You're going to be in random battles over and over again. This also uses the fourth gen uh, Pokemon, so it's not an expansive roster. There's 150 characters, and there's some extra ones that you can pick up after you go into the post-game content and stuff. But it's not massive, and you're going to see a lot of recycled encounters, a lot of the same Pokemon trainers along the road that are uh, the same models the same types. You're going to be battling in very similar situations. Now, you can press the run button and get out, but of course, that's that balance of leveling up your Pokemon and getting the power and watching them evolve and deciding to grind through every battle. And I've been choosing to do that, although I have felt like, oh my God, okay, am I going to battle and get this Geodude again one more time? There's a lot of Geodudes. Everything has been crafted with a tip of the hat to the sprite animations and graphics and stuff, but it's lovely. You know, I, I just find this incredibly inviting. I think that this was a safe decision on the Pokemon Company and Nintendo and Game Freak's part to do this remake, which was handled by a different developer, ILCA, which has done a lot of support work on Pokemon over the years. It's not really incredibly ambitious, but it is so fun to play. That is the one thing. And it's been such an interesting contrast to go through something that is a little tough 
to love in Shin Megami Tensei, although I am loving it, but it's pushing back on you quite a bit. And this one is just like wrapping you in a warm hug. It's just like, come on in. We're good here. You're not going to be too stressed out. You're not going to be getting crushed. And if you're a key Pokemon faints, I have a, I'm a penguin type. I'm a water type. I love my Parker Pengo is the name of my little character. If you lose Parker Pengo, you've got a bunch of other cool ones that can zap them and flap their wings and get them and you're going to be fine everything is going to be fine and it is it's fine it's really fine and it's fun to play and i especially feel that warmth when i'm i'm just chilling on the couch playing on the switch in handheld mode it's really cool and to think of how far pokemon has come this journey that we've been on which blows my mind because i was skeptical when i first saw it you know 25 years ago 20 i don't even longer than that now what do we got back here what is everybody talking about this pokemon thing what's going on with this well, Pokemon is a craze that people are lining up for here in America. It's interactive, RPG, multiplayer, collecting, strategy, simulation, monster battle game. It's a riot. That's one long sentence. And I was learning about Pokemon coming on the scene. I'm like, I don't, I, you gotta collect these little cutesy, I didn't really understand it, you know? But it's been wild to be covering the business all the way along and see this growth and this evolution. And yes, I loved S.H.I.E.L.D. I played the crap out of that game. It was so cool. I can't wait for Arceus. It looks amazing. And I like where Pokemon is going with all this stuff. I even liked uh, Pokemon Go, you know? Like, there's some really cool stuff that's happening in this universe, but there's still value in playing a very large and robust, nostalgic, glowy experience like this. You can also do some interesting things in the Grand Underground. You can collect treasure and you can create a little secret base and you're trying to collect all the Pokemon that don't exist above ground, which is cool. There are these super contest shows that you can get into, which are a little bit rhythm based, although it didn't work quite as fluidly as I wanted to. It was still cool. You're getting your Pokemon to dance and things like that based on all the rhythm cues that are coming up. It was, it was fun to do that and customize the stickers on the Pokeball, which create the end effect animation as they come out of the Pokeball was super cool as well. It's still a thrill, man. It's still a thrill collecting these characters. Yes, I think that this is not the most ambitious experience that you can play out there, but I felt the same way about Link's Awakening, and I loved playing that, and I've loved playing Pokemon Shining Pearl as well. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10.